let me just hear how he feels. Yeah. That's a lot of Filipinos. Somewhere in Glendale, there's an empty hospital. Just doctors walking around going, where's Bernadette? She's at the comedy show. <laughs> if you're not Filipino, that's how they talk. My mom talks like that, right? It doesn't matter how exciting the news is, my mom's face always looks depressed. <laughs> Most exciting news in the world, depression on the face. It's your sister's birthday. <laughs> your brother's getting married. Well, that sucks, Mom. <laughs> My mom never runs out of words. She loves the, the, the W's. The W words are my mom's hands down her favorite words. What? Why? Where? Who? And then when he can't answer any of them, she goes like this, exactly, exactly. My mom got divorced. It was kind of like, yeah, you're divorced now. Raise these kids, you know what I mean? Like, my mom had nowhere to go. She's an immigrant woman from, you know, from the Philippines, and now she's divorced in the States and trying to figure out how to take care of these kids. And it was just a fucked up situation that we were all in, man. We were all, we were all broke, you know what I mean? And, you know, and times were tough, you know what I mean? My mom is part of my act. I talk about her nonstop. Like, it's all I know about is my mom. So yeah, when I, when I started doing stand-up, the first, uh, I'd have to say 13 years, I was scared to talk about my mom. Like, I didn't want to. I knew that there was funny stories to be told, but I didn't know how to do it on stage. So it took me a while, man. I was really scared to talk about my mom, but, but once it started, it was over with. My mom was tough as shit. I, I remember one time I was at a shoe store and I was fucking up the shoe wall. You know the shoe display wall? Fucking it up, just putting shoes all over the place, right? And the salesman saw me and he was like, hey, get the fuck out of here. Fucking up the shoe wall, get the fuck out of here. He's cursing at me, right? He didn't know my mom was in the back of the store. He couldn't see her. <laughs> She's 4'10". My mom popped around the corner. She was like, hey, who are you talking to? You don't talk to my children like that. Who are you, huh? I want to speak to the manager. And the guy started making fun of my mom's accent. Oh, you want to speak, speak to the manager? Huh? You want to talk, talk to the manager? And my mom goes, oh, that's funny. You're making fun of my accent? I live in your country and I speak two languages, Tagalog and English. You live here, how many do you speak? One? You're stupid. Oh, did you think you were going to get that stereotypical Asian woman? Like, sorry, I'm so sorry, OK. Fuck that. This is a goddamn ninja, man. And you don't need subtitles. You understand everything she's saying. She said, fuck you. That's what she said, dude. Don't you talk to me like that. Huh? Like I'm stupid? Fuck you. <laughs> Yo, she's crazy. My mom's very sassy. My mom's just very sassy. She loves turquoise. She just loves American Indian pieces. She loves anything turquoise. She collects them. She loves anything, anything American Indian at all. She loves it. And she wears a ridiculous amount of these obnoxious, like, plaque-sized things. And, and then she acts very surprised if anyone compliments one of them. She does a real modest play. She goes, oh, thank you. Oh, I forgot that I had this on today. That's so... Isn't that funny? I totally forgot about that. How sweet of you to notice. Hm, what fun. Meanwhile, it's like a Navajo graveyard covering her entire left breast. I think there's a lot of, like, wildly strange, inappropriate, you know, moments with mothers and daughters, and it's just, it's too close, you know, so it's funny. My mom is a bleeding, bleeding heart liberal. 
She loves to read a cab driver's name to them. She likes to kind of bite into an ethnic name and overly honor it. It's really alarming. I get very nervous when she's about to read a name tag because she's going to bite into it and she's going to rock on. Excuse me, Sarah Hanje. What a marvelous name. What region is that? I'm like, he's not a wine. He's a man. Leave him alone. The worst part of his day is that you have access to his name right now. She goes, I just want to say, Sarhanj, that I am so sorry for some of these terrible things President Trump has been saying about Muslims. I'm like, that's not even the good way to say it. That's the Klansy way to say it. You can't say Muslim. That's the evil Klansy way. And she'll be like, we think Muslims are fantastic, Sarahanje. And you and any of your wonderful Muslim brethren are welcome in our country. He's just glaring at her like, I'm Sikh, you white bitch, get out of my cab. And she's like, cultural bridge built. Who's next? I'm like, that was an active disaster. She likes it when I impersonate her. She gets upset if I don't do her. And if I don't talk about her, she'll go, where was I? And that's her way of saying she's disappointed. She'll go, I thought I was going to be in your talent show, which is what she calls my stand-up. But like a little bit of background about my family. My family's favorite restaurant growing up was Hooters. Like we, we loved a good chicken. You guys are like, obviously, obviously that was your favorite restaurant. And uh, we loved Hooters because they had amazing chicken wings and they were cheap. And we were fat and poor, so it was awesome. When my mom was dating this, this guy, uh, I remember one time uh, we were trying to figure out where to go eat one night, and uh, I was like, oh, well, let's, let's just go to Hooters. And he was standing right here beside her, and my mom, out of nowhere, she's like, I have never <laughs> eaten at Hooters. was a Hooters waitress. No. No. I was like, you hired two Hooters waitresses to hula hoop for my brother's 18th birthday party. I have no, those were just two girls that love to hula hoop. I have never been to Hooters. I'm perfectly fine with the mom jokes that that she does on stage. In fact, at uh, I'll be at shows, and people at the shows will say, "How can you stand this?" I mean, are not you mean spirited uh, though? Are you okay with what she says? I said yes. The truth of it is, she would rather me talk about her and her be the center of attention than me not talk about her at all. Oh, that is so true. The worst part would be not including her in my sex. That's true. Then no one's looking at her. Although I never say include me in something. Anything I do in my life can be on the stage, and I have no idea what it's going to be. She enjoys attention. Just say I'm a good sport. You're a good sport. Thank you. And you like attention. Well, that's true. <laughs>